Hi, this is William Bronchick, and I want to talk to you today about a very important public service announcement, the wholesale scam. In my book, Flipping Properties, I talk about wholesale properties, that is, buying properties well below market and then reselling them as is to other investors who then fix them up and sell them or keep them as rental properties. Or buy wholesale properties and fix them up yourself and sell them to owner-occupants. The problem is, not too many people have an idea these days of what really is wholesale. And as a result, a lot of investors and real estate professionals, mortgage brokers and real estate brokers, are taking advantage of other investors who, let's say, are green in the business. This is how the wholesale scam works. Let's say a property is worth $100,000. Now, first let's talk about what a property is worth. A property is worth, it, worth what someone is willing to pay on the open market within a reasonable time period. So let's say in this particular neighborhood, the houses in the $100,000 range are generally on the market for 60 to 90 days. $100,000 is the price that you'd price it at to sell it within 60 to 90 days. If you wanted to sell that property in 30 days, what would you have to do? you'd have to drop the price, of course, and that price might be $85,000 to get it sold quickly. If the market is such that the average house sits on for six months and you're using comparable sales that where the property's sold in six months' time, not 30 days' time, it's not an accurate comp to say that property A sold in 30 days for 100000 property B sold in six months. Because in order to sell a property quickly, less than the average time period, you have to be able to drop the price. So when someone says what a property is worth, you have to consider what it's worth in selling within the median time period that other houses sell for that are similar in the neighborhood or less. The problem is, is that investors who really don't take the time to research it rely on other people, either other investors who aren't ethical or real estate brokers who are getting a commission on the deal or even maybe a mortgage broker who's getting a commission on the deal to tell them what the property is worth. Now, it's easy to get an appraisal for a property for $100,000, even though on the open market it probably wouldn't even sell for $100,000 because an appraisal is just an opinion. Also, you might have a scenario where, let's say, a builder had sold a bunch of properties at $100,000 and then couldn't sell the rest of them. Why? Because there was just too many units. So in order for that builder to really sell the rest of the properties, the, the builder would have to offer some kind of wild concession, such as free upgrades, maybe special kind of financing. So that's not really a good comp. So a typical wholesale scam might work like this. An investor would go to a builder who's got uh, lots of inventory of these properties that, are, that had, had previously been sold for 100000 and now can't sell six months or a year later. He makes a deal with this builder that he's going to buy these properties at $85,000 a pop. That investor then goes to another investor, the amateur, the green investor, and says, look, I could get you these properties for 5000 under market. They're worth 100000 but I can get you into the property for 95000 And I've got a mortgage broker who can do the whole deal so you can get in with no money down financing. In fact, you can even take 5000 back at closing because it'll price for 100 I'm going to sell it to you for 95 and you could squeeze out five and walk away from closing. Now, there's many problems with this scenario. Number one, the real value of the house is not $100,000 because since those properties weren't selling, the only way that those properties would sell through the builder is, number one, if the builder offered $15,000 in concessions or dropped the price down of $85,000 to sell it quickly, which a lot of builders are not willing to do. They're not willing to jeopardize the values of their own properties by selling them too cheap. They'd rather hold them and offer incentives and pump up the inflated price. So what happens in the end is the, the sort of scam investor goes in there and buys them at eighty five dollars from the builder sells it for ninety-five to an investor who doesn't know any better. The investor gets a $100,000 loan and walks out with 5000 cash and thinks they got a deal here. The problem is, in most cases, with these types of 100% financing loans, the payments are so high that the investor, who ultimately ends up owning the property, can't rent it for even close to break-even cash flow. And B, when they go to resell the property, they realize there's no value in there. There's, there's no equity at all in the property. They bought it for 95 and in reality, when they bought it, it was really only worth 85 And the problem is here is that people are relying on the advice of others for value. The lesson here is that as an investor, you should always do your own research. Don't trust an appraisal. Don't trust the seller's opinion. Don't trust the broker's opinion. They all have an interest in the deal. Do your own research and come up with what a real value is for this property. Number two, if you're going to finance at 100% or even 110% in this case, 
what are you going to do when you can't rent that property? If you've got no equity in the property, you've got no cash flow, and then you turn around and try to sell it maybe on a lease with option and realize there's no value in the property, there's no uh, room to sell the property for, for an inflated value, there's nowhere to go. Now you're stuck with one or two or three properties. And unfortunately, and I hope you're not one of those people out there watching this video, I hope it's not one of you, but I've met a lot of people who got into exactly the same scenario and they bought five, six, seven, eight, ten properties just like this. They're all upside down. They all have bad loans with usually first and second mortgages and negative cash flow, and now they can't get rid of these properties. Don't let this be you. Do your own due diligence. I have shame for those investors who take advantage of the other investors, the newbies, or the real estate brokers or mortgage brokers who do the same. But remember, the bottom line is you. Take responsibility for your investments. Don't trust everyone else's opinion who has an interest in the deal. You have to, on the bottom line, do all the research yourself and make sure that an investment is suitable for you and that there actually is a profit in it. I'm Bill Bronchick, and thanks for watching.